Hey guys, how's it going? So today we're gonna to be spending a little bit of time organizing in and around our greenhouse. So this fall, we uh, kind of retrofitted this greenhouse. It was a cold frame, it still looks like a cold frame. Um, and it's still essentially a cold frame, except we have a heater now in the back and we can heat it. And we do intend on doing that this winter. I don't know how hot or how warm we'll want to keep it in here, but I'd like to try some things. I'd like to try to see if I can grow some crops in here. Um, I would like to winter over some tender things because you know the Hartley we do not have set up to heat yet and it won't be set up until next year and that's totally fine. Um, it actually gives me a little bit of time to think through some other decisions around the Hartley in terms of landscaping and whether or not I want the flooring that's inside to kind of spill out to the outside. <laughs> you know those kinds of things. It's giving me some more time. Um, but in the whole shuffle of getting this greenhouse retrofitted you know plants and tables just got moved everywhere. So I would like to make some sense of all of it. A lot of the things that are still sitting here on tables can't actually live in here over the winter because it'll be too warm. They need a cold period. So I'm gonna winter things over outside behind the greenhouse like we used to do at the garden center. Let me give you a look at what we've got going on. So this area as a whole, we wanna keep this lane empty so that we can get the gator you know, really close to our pile of wood that's in the back. Uh, the three tables that are out here, I'd like to get those cleared off and moved back in. Uh, they're not like the, they're pretty sturdy. But, you know, the more they sit out in weather, they more, the more they deteriorate. So we'd like to get those inside. And I've got some annuals that just need to be tossed. They got nipped by the frost, some of which might winter over in our greenhouse. I'm going to try. I still intend on using some of these things in containers. Uh, there's some violas, which, you know, I mean, I might try cutting them back and putting them in the greenhouse and see if I can get some new growth to flush. They look pretty when they're all grouped together, but they're pretty stringy will not go back in their home here. Get back in your home. Russell's gonna be involved. These roses are the Atlas roses. These are all going to the college actually. So they're supposed to come by and pick them up here pretty quick. I've got some St. John's Ward I picked up on one of Aaron and my uh, nursery trips because I just thought they were pretty. I just haven't planted them yet. I've got some roses here that I picked up last spring. <laughs> still haven't planted them. We've still got these. So I'm thinking I could pull this stuff probably pretty soon you know because a lot of it if you stand back and don't look at it close it's okay but when you get close on it there's quite a bit of yellowing and such and like the salvia is all broken and i could that's a good opportunity to use some of this fresh stuff that will probably last through the winter when we had gas run from the side of the barn you know we had gas trenched out here and then they had to uh, dig a big trench to get it over to the greenhouse like up underneath the greenhouse frame and they just got the trench filled in yesterday. It's still a total mess because the ground is so wet right now. They they got it like kind of patched in and they said, well, the hole is filled, but we need it to dry out a little bit more before we come back and really clean it up. So they do intend on coming back to clean it up, but I still can organize kind of around it. Also the ducting, they'll need to still put the ducting for the heat out this back hole. So I might just kind of organize their stuff together into one pile instead of having it strung out. But as we move to the back of the greenhouse, this is where we're going to be wintering over all of our perennial things. You know, I got these topiaries on sale. I could not pass up. I did not pay $120 for them. What did I pay for them? They were super cheap. I had it in a video. I might have to look up how much I paid, but I thought it was worth it for the size of them, just to have them on hand for projects. Uh, we've got some sedums, um, some hydrangeas. These are the little lime punch. Like a lot of these have a destination. We are gonna finish off our little lime punch hedge once we remove that uh, lilac, the old lilac. So I've got those uh, saved back. Uh, we've got some other things back here, some annuals, which I'm going to try to um, winter over in the greenhouse. So there's some really beautiful straw flowers. I usually do not have this many annuals left over at the end of a season. Uh, there was just a couple of projects that I wanted to do and wasn't able to get to. Um, so anyway, that's why I have some. And uh, so I'll try to give some of them away to friends who want them. And then I'm gonna winter over a few. We got both kitties out here, but you can see this is where the trench was. That's where the gas is and then they brought it right up and there was a hole right here and up to the heater so this area it really can't be i mean i don't blame them it's too hard to kind of work in the muddy conditions to get it all raked out smooth but that will be fixed eventually um and then you can just tour through our kind of <laughs> pile back here that's kind of what it's become. I've got some um, cabbage and kale, things like that back here. There's some hookahs that I've got projects waiting. I just need to get to them. 
And then we've got kind of our pile of pots back here. These ones were a little bit too big to fit on my shelving unit inside the barn. So um, usually it's a fall project to kind of organize everything and kind of stack everything nicely back here. So we'll see what we can get done. Now at the garden center, whenever we had plants left over, we would huddle anything that was like perennial shrub, that sort of thing that usually lives outside here, um, we would huddle everything together on the ground and then just put soil bags around it kind of to create a little bit of extra insulation. And 99%, 95% of things made it through winter just fine. Uh, the biggest thing is to make sure that uh, they stay moist. Uh, here, like right now it looks like an overcast, well it is, it's overcast, rain last night, it's fairly wet, but that's not really typical of our area. We'll have some days like that, but then we'll have long dry windy spells. And those are the times we need to make sure to come out here. And it's like anything in a container, any container you have an evergreen or a perennial in, need to make sure to keep it on a schedule. Like every two weeks, go check on it. If it's been raining a lot, you could probably skip you know that watering but if it looks dry on the soil surface toss a little bit of water in there and i'm not talking like a deluge or really you know a whole bunch of water just enough to keep the roots slightly damp that's kind of what we shoot for uh anyway that's kind of the order of the day i'm going to remove all the plants from the tables move the tables and then organize everything on the ground right here in a big huddle so i'm going to go grab some gloves and it's a perfect day for it because it is cool this morning. We still don't have a freezing temperature on our forecast, our 10 day, which is great, which means that I'll probably end up with a little pile of things that I want to get planted out if we can. Oh, things that just need to be out of their containers like those roses. Okay, I had my gloves in here. Oh, there they are. Planted daffodils yesterday. Gotta admit, I'm a little bit sore. I dug 320 holes with that nine inch auger. And while that made bulb planting a lot faster, my body's like, oh, so I think doing this, this job today will be nice. It'll be a change of pace. I'll probably still be sore in a different way from this job. And then maybe tomorrow I will pick up and finish all the rest of at least the tulip planting. We'll see. I'm also going to grab a pop-up bag because I like to groom things as I go and Falcos. And I know this is not a typical garden chore, so I hope you guys enjoy just kind of watching this organization happen. It's just something on my list that I needed to get done, and I thought you guys might like to see some of the plants that we have um, for projects. So I'll go through in the end and kind of give you a rundown of what we have here, but I think we'll just get started back here and see how this goes.
mean, it's all done. It's looking much more organized, but more importantly, the plants are ready for winter. So starting right up in front, let me just start with this right here. <laughs> These were the only ones out of the whole lot that I'm gonna have to toss. So they were annuals that already got nipped by the frost um, that I just kind of missed. So out of all the plants I have, that's not bad. There's a couple of pavers and bricks I need to go take back behind the orchard fence because that's where we're storing all of those things. I have one spruce tree that's gonna be going to a friend's house. And then this is the John Deere tractor, the lawn tractor that I, um, I moved, I'll show you in a minute. It's the cover for it. And I went and got the cover and realized it's been sitting out in the rain. So I wanted to um, put it out here. As soon as I get all this junk off of it, I'm going to clean it off and let it sit out in the sun and dry before I put it over the lawn tractor. But this is like the only thing I was left with other than a few leaves that I raked up. Pretty good. So the tables from in front are gone. This is the one pile that hopefully I'm hoping to get planted. So like I said, these little Atlas roses are going to the college. I've got the two Hypericums and then a peony right here and two, four, six, eight roses. So this is my pile that I know what's gonna happen with them. I just need to get to it. We've got the containers here that still have plants in them. I think that might be my next project because this is what we were left with with the annuals. Now I know it looks like a tremendous amount and it is, but I did separate them in their, their flats as best I could. So they're only, they're half flats so that they could each have um, a lot of airflow, but they're still really beautiful. And uh, the snapdragons in particular, along with the cabbage and violas can really handle a lot of cold temperatures. So I'm going to try to probably incorporate as many of these as I can into the pots right in front of the greenhouse. Now, the other things that we have here are marigolds, which got a little bit nailed in the frost, but not bad, or the colder nights that we've had. We've got a few celosia left and then the straw flowers. Now these I'm gonna try to winter in here because those will not take cold. Um, so that'll be an experiment. I do have my rosemary. I potted this up maybe two or three years ago in this hanging basket. And it's actually lived here in the greenhouse and it survived a couple of winters. Um, let's see, I've got an agave back there that I need to, I can move that into the plant room or the studio. Um, and then these right here are an Echabecchia, which I could actually plant outside. I think they're a zone five or six. So those I could plant as well. I do have one pile in here that's TBD. To be determined, I do not know uh, exactly what I'm gonna be doing with all of these. I've got a couple of Mount Bruno boxwoods that have been in these containers for way too long. Look at this. <laughs> It's like, it's pushed itself that far out of the container, the poor thing. I think what I'll do with these two is we'll incorporate these into the containers up front. Oh, hey bud, how are you? You made it. Yeah. Good. Look at how clean it is in here. I got all the tables put back. Everything's kind of organized. Isn't that awesome? Yeah. I do have the, this is a hardy nymph glad gladiolus right there. These are supposed to survive our winters. So I brought them in here I because I, I don't think I'm going to get them planted out in the landscape. Really? I don't know that it has a fragrance. No, I don't really smell anything. Do you? Do you smell anything? I've also got an amazel basil that I'll just let live in here until it lives no more. And then I've got a couple of macrophylla hydrangeas, uh, which probably I should move out back uh, and let them winter outside. So moving out the back of the greenhouse, which at this point it's still warm enough. I'm keeping the doors open even at night. Uh, but right here, it looks so much better having everything organized. So what I did is I moved everything off the tables. Well, you saw it. I moved everything off the tables. I popped the tabletop in the back there and then stacked the cinder block. So in the spring, we can just move everything out and put the tables back up because we are going to be storing plants here again next year. It's a really good spot for it because in the summertime right now, it looks shaded. But in the summer, this uh, area gets full sun with the way the sun is positioned in the sky. Uh, the raised beds still look really pretty back here. We've got really pretty hops there growing on that trellis. There's some super tunia. Um, this is Vista Jazzberry and Vista Fuchsia. There's Cat's Pajamas Nepeta with some blooms. There's some strawberries in here. I don't know if we've got any berries though. Some little white ones. 
I've also got some salvia and some Tuscan Sun Heliopsis that will come back and cut back later. Uh, but with the bigger trees here, I just tied them to the fence rail there just to help keep them upright. But they're so sandwiched in there that I think everything will be all right. And then we've got some sprinter boxwoods, which these are also earmarked to finish the hedge on the west side when the lilac comes out. We've got a few, well, the little lime punch, hydrangea macrophylla. There's a few different varieties in here. Um, Let's Dance Rave is this really beautiful one here. We've also got little lime punch hydrangeas. There's a couple quick fire fabs and then there's an assortment of sedums like the um, rock and grow pride and joy and then there's boogie woogie here. There's one lemon jade. I've got some uh, ornamental grasses here. This is the Calama gratis. Is it avalanche overdom? Love Calama gratis. Isn't that pretty bud? I don't know what this is. That's a ornamental grass. Mm. Yeah, called overdom. Mm. Looks like wheat, doesn't it? Beautiful. Mm -hmm. I've got a north wind maple right here, which I intended on planting near the vegetable garden this year and then decided it was too exposed and I need to find a more sheltered position for this one. I've got some carex, which I think I'm going to use some of these in the front pots as well. There's a selection of daisies here. Uh, this one is called marshmallow. Isn't that pretty? I mean, this is kind of an aged bloom here, uh, but it's a new one. I think for next year, I've also got some spun silk, which have the huge flowers, huge. Uh, there's some Stand By Me Clematis, a Montana Moss Juniper right here, which grows, I think like, um, two, is it two feet tall, three feet tall by five feet wide or so? Um, it's 15 tall. It's 15 tall? Yeah. Okay. It's 15 tall, sounds about right. I've got an Akebia vine right here and then an Eskimo sunset maple and an assortment of daylilies. And I was gonna groom these and I decided to leave all the tops because all of these, the reason why we put them so close together is they help keep each other warm uh, and help insulate each other. And then we'll come along here. It's still, it's gonna look messy right here for a while until it dries out a bit and the guys come back to clean it up. Um, but we will line bags right in front of here, mulch bags or soil bags, um, just to add that extra layer of protection right in the front here. And there will be snow that comes and sets on top of these, but they need that. They need that cold in order to perform next year. And even when I stored these things in our cold frame when it was not heated, they always performed a little weird. Like it got their clock off, their rhythm off a little bit. So I think storing them outside where they want to be, even though they're still in containers, is a little bit better for them. It is still risky, as is like keeping anything in a container over the course of a winter. But if you've done your best to uh, keep everything kind of squished together, keep it insulated, keep it watered, uh, most of the time they do really well. Right here we have an astilbe called Dark Side of the Moon. I want these to go on the west side. I just didn't have a chance to get them in the ground. I might still get them in the ground this year yet. I've got some Jacob's Ladder here, uh, Lungwort. There's a few Echinaceas. This is a Hibiscus row here. This is a new one for next year. I did plant one of them out on the new property, the edge of night. Really pretty. We've got a few Sweet Romance Lavender. Uh, there's some Hollies in here. I'm trying to, I can't remember what this one is. Oh, this is a Dutzia, Yuki Snowflake Dutzia. We're gonna try again with these. I've had these before and they did not like our soil or our water or something. So we're gonna try again. We've got blackberries right here. Oh, Benjamin, I'm so glad you came out here because I have some more blueberries to winter over, but I noticed today that they've got some little blueberries on them. What? Are they sweet or tart? Are they tart? Not good? Shoot. <laughs> a little bit. We've got some hostas here. These are hellebores that came out of the Galloway urn uh, from a spring. <laughs> and I just popped them in this big container. There's like three of them in there. And they've lived there all summer long, just, you know, doing their thing. I just didn't get them out into the ground yet. I've got a Virginia creeper called Redwall that I may be planting on the orchard fence. 
Uh, we've got, this is the haywire cypress that I'm hoping to plant out at my parents' house at some point. And then we've got an assortment of hookahs, which we're gonna be using in containers. I actually try to end the year with several hookah. While I don't like to have a ton of plants on hand, this is actually pretty mild compared to years past, believe it or not. Um, but the hookah are nice to have because they work so well in fall and spring arrangements. So it's nice to have a good selection on hand. And I think I have more of those than any other thing in this row. And then we end off with a few more sprinter boxwoods. So uh, the cover is going on this lawn tractor. I was able to kind of clear this alleyway, which is so nice. We will tackle this a little bit later where we just kind of clean out anything that needs it and organize it up against the barn. I need to clean the cannas out of these containers. They're still like, they still have some color on them. And then I do intend on taking this into the greenhouse and planting it up and trying to get some crops going. And then there's just other random things we just need to organize, like ladders can go back up on the wall. This pipe needs to be back up there um, and that sort of thing. So overall, other than the fact that the ground's still all messed up, I'm super happy that this is done, uh, that they're all kind of tucked in for winter and we can draw from them as we need to for projects. As far as how we source all of these plants, kind of three different ways really. Uh, first off, at my parents' garden center. They are a full-scale garden center and they carry stuff all year round and they bring in some beautiful fun things and I'm down there all the time so of course when a new load comes in I usually get a text message from somebody down there and so I can zip down there and take a look at things so I just pick things up as you know we see them and I uh, want to put them in our landscape uh, we also pick things up at other garden centers when my mom and I are out and about or my um, Aaron and I are out and about we like to stop at garden centers and look at things and we pick things up that are pretty and then of course we do a lot of work with proven winners so we get a lot from them as well but just seeing this area kind of buttoned up a little bit more is nice because we got to it before it mattered you know it hasn't been super cold so I didn't feel a huge rush usually by this time of year we've got this kind of project done because it's already been cold for a while but it's been so mild I mean I'm gonna have to take my coat off the sun's coming out and it's beautiful out here and of course I think I already mentioned we don't have any freezing temperatures on the forecast not for the 10 day anyway and I don't know what that means for the rest of, of the winter like if it's gonna be really mild or if it'll turn here on us and start getting cold so I probably won't bring the bags out for the front you know of all of those plants back there until it kind of turns I'll just let them kind of do their thing right now they're fine uh, just the way they are and then in spring what we'll do is as it starts to warm up we'll start removing the bags first and we'll let them sit there we'll start to groom them up you know kind of remove their leaf canopy expose the plant a little bit more and then we just kind of gradually um, fluff them out, I guess. Put more space around them, more airflow around them. Because as they wake up, you don't wanna have them so jammed together um, that it either makes their growth weird uh, or causes any kind of insect issue. And that's the thing. I looked over all of these plants as I was putting together. There's no insect issues that I could see. Um, so hopefully we're not like harboring anything over back there that I don't know about. So anyway, guys, that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it was interesting. It's just part of the process here. It's one of the chores we have to get done in the fall today was a good day for it and it just kind of shows what we do to winter over our plants and you know a lot of you guys I've actually seen several comments from those of you who have picked up plants at clearance you know markdown at the end of the season at garden centers and you're wondering what you should do to winter them over well putting them in a protected spot all huddled together um, where they're going to catch some sun which these will keeping them watered that's what we do and it usually works out really great so anyway thank you guys so much for watching we'll see you in the next one bye